Hi there, our highly valued, treasured and esteemed viewers and listeners and welcome back to your channel of choice. This video I am about to present was compiled by Dr. Nath Arua, a clinical pharmacist by training and profession who is the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants, the premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a difference, where patient safety, medication therapy management and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services. So, on behalf of the Institute, I humbly urge you all to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share with you very useful tips which may prove very, very handy in your line of duty. I now welcome you all to part 172 of our Pharmacotherapy MCQ series which majors in infectious diseases. And the first question reads, SRK, a 37-year-old male patient weighing 62 kilograms, is admitted to the hospital with a chief complaint of 14 days of cough and night sweats. He reports, feeling bad, and a loss of appetite. His chest X-ray shows an infiltrate in the right lung with signs of cavitation. His pertinent vitals include a blood pressure of 128 systolic and 84 diastolic, a respiratory rate of 20 breaths per minute, and a heart rate of 115 beats per minute. His pertinent labs include the fact that his HIV test is negative, he has a serum creatinine of 1.7 mg per deciliter, and his WBC is 9.2 times 10 power 3 cells per millimeter cubed. His past medical history is significant for depression. His current medications include fluoxetine 20 mg daily. SRK is diagnosed with TB of the right lung with cavitation. So my question to you is, which is the most appropriate treatment recommendation for this patient? Is it a. isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 2000 mg plus athambiotol 1500 mg for 4 months, followed by isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg for a 2 month continuation phase, or b. Isoniazid 600 mg plus rifampin 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 2000 mg plus athambiotol 1500 mg for 2 months, followed by isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg for a 2 month continuation phase, or c. Isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg plus pyrazinamide 2000 mg plus athambiotol 1500 mg for 4 months, followed by isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg for a 2 month continuation phase, or is it d. isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg plus pyrazinamide 2000 mg plus athambiotol 1500 mg for 2 months, followed by isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg for a 4 month continuation phase. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, D, isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg plus pyrazinamide 2000 mg plus athambiotol 1500 mg for 2 months, followed by isoniazid 300 mg plus rifampin 600 mg for a 4 month continuation phase. Treatment of active pulmonary TB consists of a two-month intensive phase and a four-month continuation phase, making answers C and A incorrect. 
The intensive phase consists of a four-drug regimen, isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, and athambiotol. Answers D and B contain the correct number of months for the intensive and continuation phase, however, answer B is incorrect because of dosing. Isoniazid is dosed at 5 mg per kilogram, 300 mg is the typical starting dose, and rifampin at 10 mg per kilogram, 600 mg is the typical starting dose. That makes answer D correct. Please advance to the next question. And the next question reads, TDZ, a 44-year-old HIV-positive female patient weighing 52 kg presents to your TB clinic. She was recently given a diagnosis of pulmonary TB. Her HAART regimen consists of efavirenz 600 mg, tenofovir 300 mg, and emtricitabine 200 mg. Her pertinent labs include a CD4 count of 400 cells per millimeter cubed, and an undetectable viral load. So my question to you is, which of the regimens listed below would be the most appropriate for treating TDZ's TB? Would it be a. Rifabutin 300 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiotol 800 mg, or b. Rifampin 450 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiotol 800 mg, or, c. Rifabutin 150 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiotol 800 mg, or would it be, d. Rifampin 600 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiotol 800 mg. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, D, rifampin 600 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiotol 800 mg. According to the information provided, the patient takes efavirenz 600 mg plus emtricitabine 200 mg and tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate 300 mg. Rifampin and rifabutin are known CYP enzyme inducers, with rifabutin less inducing, that is about 40% less than rifampin. Both can lower efavirenz concentrations. Either agent can be given with efavirenz to properly manage the patient's TB and HIV. However, rifabutin has a bidirectional interaction. Efavirenz can reduce rifabutin concentrations, making it difficult to optimize therapy. If used concurrently, a rifabutin dose of 450 mg is recommended. Rifabutin 150 mg answer C, is too low. Rifabutin 300 mg answer A, could be used, but might need dose adjustment. A more manageable regimen would use rifampin, which is not a CYP substrate, and concentrations would be unaffected by efavirenz. That makes answer B incorrect because this would be a lower than necessary dose. Efavirenz, when administered at the standard 600 mg dose, still produces trough concentrations well above the concentrations required to suppress HIV in vitro in most patients who are co-administered rifampin efavirenz. That makes answer D correct. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, OLM, a 25-year-old male HIV-positive patient was recently diagnosed with pulmonary TB at your chest clinic. 
His HAART regimen consists of Daranaviar 800 mg boosted with Ritanaviar 100 mg plus Tenofovir 300 mg plus Emtricetabine 200 mg, all once daily. His pertinent labs include a CD4 count of 280 cells per millimeter cubed and his viral load is undetectable. His other labs are within normal limits. So my question to you is, which regimen would be best for treating OLM's TB? Would it be, A. Rifabutin 300 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiatol 800 mg, or, B. Rifampin 450 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiatol 800 mg, or, c. Rifabutin 150 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiatol 800 mg, or would it be, d. Rifampin 600 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiatol 800 mg. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, C. Rifabutin 150 mg plus isoniazid 300 mg plus perazinamide 1500 mg plus athambiatol 800 mg. Rifampin is not recommended with most protease inhibitors because its inductive properties cause largely reduced concentrations of CYP substrates, such as the protease inhibitors. Darunavir is contraindicated with rifampin, making answer D incorrect. Rifabutin, because of its less potent inductive abilities, is recommended in place of rifampin. However, because rifabutin is a CYP3A substrate and the protease inhibitors can increase rifabutin concentrations, which can lead to toxicity, e.g., anterior uveritis or neutropenia, a reduction in dose is likely warranted from 300 mg in answer A, to 150 mg in answer C. A 450 mg dose would increase the risk of rifabutin toxicity, making answer B incorrect. Please proceed to the next question. And the next question reads, TNS, a 28-year-old female patient was recently exposed to her boyfriend, who has active TB. A quantiferin TB gold test confirms TNS has LTBI. TNS is three months pregnant. She only supplements prenatal vitamin and is otherwise healthy. She is concerned about taking any medication that could harm her fetus. So my question to you is, which of the regimens listed below would be the most appropriate for TNS? Would it be a. Isoniazid 300 mg once daily for nine months, or b. Rifampin 600 mg once daily plus pyrazinamide 1500 mg once daily for 60 days, or, c. Rifampin 600 mg once daily for 120 days, or would it be, d. Isoniazid 900 mg plus rifapentine 900 mg once weekly for 90 days. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, A isoniazid 300 mg OD for 9 months.
the safety of the isoniazid rifapentine regimen has not been established in pregnant women, making answer D incorrect. Rifampin and pyrazinamide have an increased risk of hepatotoxicity and should not be used to treat LTBI that makes answer B incorrect. Isoniazid can increase the risk of hepatotoxicity in the first few months, and in the absence of risk factors, holding treatment until two to three months postpartum may be considered. Answer C. However, this patient has a risk factor because she was in recent contact with a person with active TB, therefore, she should be treated with isoniazid 300 mg daily for nine months. Visit the website https colon slash slash www.cdc.gov slash tb slash publications slash limitably slash treatment dot htm closing parenthesis. Answer A is correct. Please advance to the next question. And the next question reads, TNS has her 5-year-old child, TSB whose weight is 20 kg, tested for TB at the clinician's recommendation. Active TB is ruled out, but TSB also has latent TB infection. So my question to you is, which of the regimens listed below would be the most appropriate for TSB? Would it be A? Rifampin 200 mg once daily plus pyrazinamide 1000 mg once daily for 60 days, or b. Isoniazid 200 mg twice weekly for 9 months, or c. Isoniazid 200 mg once daily for 9 months, or would it be d. Isoniazid 200 mg plus rifapentine 300 mg once weekly for 90 days. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, C, isoniazid 200 mg once daily for 9 months. Rifapentine is not recommended in children younger than 12 years because of a lack of studies, making answer D incorrect. Answer A, is incorrect because of the increased risk of hepatotoxicity with rifampin or pyrazinamide. The preferred regimen for children age 2 to 11 years is 9 months of daily isoniazid at 10 to 15 mg per kilogram, or 20 to 40 mg per kilogram for intermittent therapy. This patient weighs 20 kg. A daily isoniazid dose would be 200 to 300 mg, many clinicians will opt for the lower dose. That makes answer C correct. An intermittent dose would be 400 to 800 mg as in answer B is only 200 mg and is an insufficient dose. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, ASD, a 29-year-old male patient weighing 70 kg, is admitted to the hospital with a chief complaint of hemoptysis for the past 48 hours. He admits having been given a diagnosis of TB three months ago, but he defaulted treatment. ASD is diagnosed with TB resistant to rifampin and isoniazid, classified as MDRTB. His pertinent labs are within normal limits. He is HIV negative. So my question to you is, which of the following would be the most appropriate initial regimen for ASD now? Would it be a. Pyrazinamide 2000 mg once daily, levofloxacin 750 mg once daily, clofazamine 100 mg once daily, cycloserine 250 mg once daily, and ethionamide 250 mg twice daily, or b. 
pyrazinamide 2000 mg once daily, levofloxacin 750 mg once daily, amikacin 1000 mg once daily, and cycloserine 250 mg once daily, or, c, levofloxacin 750 mg once daily, amikacin 1000 mg once daily, cycloserine 250 mg once daily, ethionamide 250 mg twice daily, and cofazamine 100 mg once daily, or would it be, d, pyrazinamide 2000 mg once daily, levofloxacin 750 mg once daily, amikacin 1000 mg once daily, cycloserine 250 mg once daily, and ethionamide 250 mg twice daily. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, D, pyrazinamide 2000 mg once daily, levofloxacin 750 mg once daily, amikacin 1000 mg once daily, cycloserine 250 mg once daily, and ethionamide 250 mg twice daily. According to the current guidelines, MDRTB should be treated with at least five effective medications. Answer B contains four active medications, making it incorrect. Of the five effective medications, one should be pyrazinamide if the patient is not resistant, and this patient is not, the patient is only resistant to rifampin and isoniazid, making answer C incorrect. Of the two remaining answers, answer A may include five active medications but does not contain a medication from WHO group B, an injectable agent, e.g., an aminoglycoside or capriomycin, making answer D correct. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, SMK, a 27-year-old male patient was recently diagnosed with pulmonary TB. His current medications include isoniazid 900 mg thrice weekly, rifampin 600 mg thrice weekly, pyrazinamide 2000 mg thrice weekly, and athambiotol 1200 mg thrice weekly. SMK's symptoms have improved since initial diagnosis 30 days ago, but he has not gained weight, and sputum remains smear positive. His physician is concerned that the medications are not fully effective and orders therapeutic drug monitoring. The lab reports return as follows, rifampin 2-hour concentration is 6 mcg per milliliter. Rifampin 6-hour concentration is 3 mcg per milliliter. Isoniazid 2-hour concentration is 4 mcg per milliliter. Isoniazid 6-hour concentration is 10 mcg per milliliter. So my question to you is, which of the following statements best describes what is occurring with respect to isoniazid and rifampin? Is it a. isoniazid delayed absorption, rifampin delayed absorption, or b. isoniazid delayed absorption, rifampin malabsorption, or c. isoniazid malabsorption, rifampin malabsorption, or is it d. isoniazid malabsorption, rifampin delayed absorption? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, B. Isoniazid delayed absorption, rifampin malabsorption. 
With respect to therapeutic drug monitoring, malabsorption refers to lower than expected concentrations of a medication because of its inadequate absorption, which can occur as the result of several factors, including disease state e.g., HIV, and diabetes. Delayed absorption is, by definition, absorption of a drug later than what typically occurs, i.e., the Tmax is at a later time. This patient's rifampin concentrations at 2 and 6 hours are below the expected range of 8 to 24 mcg per milliliter, which corresponds to malabsorption, but are not delayed, making answers A and D incorrect. Isoniazid at a 900 mg dose produces concentrations at around 2 hours of 9 to 12 mcg per milliliter. The 6-hour value is within the expected range, whereas the 2-hour value is not, which corresponds to delayed absorption, making answer C incorrect and answer B correct. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, which of the dose adjustments listed below would be most appropriate in SMK's case? Would it be, A. No dose adjustment is necessary, or, B. Increasing isoniazid to 1,200 mg, or, C. Increasing rifampin to 900 mg, or would it be, D. Increasing isoniazid to 1,200 mg plus rifampin to 1,200 mg. I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, C, increasing rifampin to 900 mg. Although its absorption is delayed, isoniazid is producing the expected concentrations, therefore, a dose adjustment is not needed. That makes answers D and B incorrect. Rifampin concentrations are well below the expected concentration range of 8 to 24 mcg per milliliter. If the patient's symptoms were improving, a dose adjustment might not be needed. That makes answer A incorrect. However, because this is not the case, and the rifampin dose should be increased. Rifampin follows linear pharmacokinetics, thus, doubling the dose would double the concentrations. A dose increase to 1,200 mg is warranted. That makes answer C correct. So there you have it, our highly esteemed viewers and listeners, that brings us to the end of this video. If it benefited you in any way, kindly remember to give it a thumbs up, to like it and to share it widely with your peers. Please leave your comments at the bottom. And if you haven't yet done so, I humbly urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would like to promise you all that the very, very best is yet to come. Thank you very much for viewing this video. On behalf of our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arua, I sincerely appreciate your partnership, continued support and kind collaboration. We look forward to interacting with you in the next video, which will be part 173.